There's a lot of negativity in the press about just how bad the UK charging infrastructure is. And my last video didn't help very much because it showed me in a Fiat 500e queuing twice actually at Ionity Cobham. Not really good enough, is it? But I charged quite a few times in 2022 and each time I charged, I, I took a, a video of it or a picture. I'm great fun at parties. I've got all this footage just lying around on my computer and I haven't done anything with most of it. So I thought it actually might be quite nice to take a kind of a year period and just go through it and just show you how charging has been for me. And it's as honest as any of my other videos. I'll show you the good points and the bad points. Um, and we'll just, at the end of it, we'll just have a little discussion about whether the charging infrastructure in the UK is really as bad as we're told it is. What I'm going to focus on is whether I got a charge, whether I had to queue, if the charger was broken, that kind of thing. Just the basics. I'm not going to talk about cost because that fluctuates and also I was using the um, Hyundai card most of the time so it was pretty cheap for me. And I'm not even going to talk about the charging speed because again that's variable depending on what um, car you've got generally. So just going to talk about the chargers, whether I got a charge and you know how it was. One of the things I've got to say up front is it depends where you're going, where you are in the country, all this sort of stuff. Some places are much better than others, but this is just me doing my journeys all around the UK. So hopefully this video is going to be really interesting for you, especially if you haven't got an EV yet and you've been listening to lots of lots of horror stories and you're a bit worried about it. Let's see how bad it really is. So let's get straight into it. 2022, how was it for public charging? Well, we're gonna start 2022 in style, actually. So 30th of January, 2022, we went to Shell, Fulham Road, and we went in the Ionic 5, we were in London. I don't think we even needed to charge, actually. I just wanted to look at this charging station, geeky as that is, I know. But this is a pretty interesting one. Shell, as you know, big oil giant. This used to be a petrol station, and they've converted it, and they've turned it into an EV charging hub, and credit where it's due, it's the best example of greenwashing I've ever seen. This is an amazing place. Fantastic signage. When you drive in, there's a thing that tells you which ones are available. So you've got a shop, cafe. What kind of toy is supposed to be inside? Something plasticky and rubbish. Okay, I'll look, I'll look at this. It's a beautiful looking place, like wood everywhere and solar panels on the top. The cynic in me thinks that Shell could build a thousand of these across the country and not break a sweat with the amount of money they make. Um, so quite why they've only done one, I don't know. Obviously they've converted a petrol station, so there's, there's no petrol offered there at all, but they could easily do a load of these. What they did do is they built this and they advertised the hell out of it. So um, I kept seeing adverts pop up about this all, the, all over the place. They worked a treat, paid with a credit card, all good. Let's go to number two. So 6th of February, went to uh, just Morrison's in Canterbury, just in the leaf. I didn't even bother taking video of this because it's so dull and I've been there a thousand times before, but did it work? Yes, it did. And I used the Genie Point app. Next up, McDonald's in Rochester, again in the leaf. That worked fine, just paid with my debit card, all good. This gets a bit more interesting. I went to uh, York uh, in 23rd of March. This is quite a long way for me, uh, 263 miles from Canterbury. I was thinking about taking the train. The train would have cost £137.90, plus parking, plus getting a taxi to get to the, my destination. And that would have taken three hours, 27 minutes. Would have had, it would have involved two changes. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to solve that. I'm going to go in the car. I will tell you the cost, actually, because I suppose it's quite interesting that this cost £80, but that's with the Hyundai card, RFID card. And it took four hours, 48, including the two charges, which were 39 minutes to do the two charges. So anyway, just it's quite an quite interesting comparison, I think, between train and car. Obviously, the car is more convenient, I would say, even with the charges. Um, but anyway, York's a beautiful place. First time I've ever been there. And the Hyundai Ionic 5 was just amazing. Anyway, on the way up, I charged at Ionity at Peterborough Services. With Ionity, you can't use a debit card or credit card, so I had to use an RFID card. I had the Charge My Hyundai card, which I used for that. Works an absolute treat, no problem at all. Got to York, I actually stayed at a hotel that had a charger, but there was someone else using it, unfortunately, so I did have to charge on the way back. And I stopped at Doncaster, I stopped at an Instavolt there, and debit card works absolutely fine. Now, the interesting thing about this is that Instavolt are really, really good. If you don't know about Instavolt, they're one of the most reliable charging networks in the country. And I think one of the reasons they are so reliable is they proactively go around in their van and they check that charges are working okay. So while I was there, there was actually an Instavolt van there and he was just 
giving a charger a good service. Something that's interesting about these chargers, now Instavolt are installing these BYD chargers. I don't want to get too technical, but these, these chargers are, in theory, 120 kilowatts, which is great. But it's only 120 kilowatts if you've got an 800 volt car. I mean, you would never know that, right? And uh, now I had that with the Ionic 5 and I got the full speed, but most people don't have an 800 volt car. Most cars are 400 volts. So you're not necessarily going to get 120 kilowatts. This is a ridiculous situation, all this kind of, I mean, you shouldn't have to worry about all that, right? Anyway, so it was great. The Instagram charger is right next to a pub and right next to a shop. The only issue really with this is it was parking spaces are so tight. I really struggled to get the Ionic 5 in there because that's quite a wide car. Um, in terms of accessibility, it's pretty awful. So after Doncaster, I had to stop again at um, Cambridge Services at Ionity. And um, I think this is a brand new one, actually. It looked pretty new. Absolutely fine. Perfect. Charged my Hyundai card used for that. And um, I was parked right next to a Taycan driver. He literally just got his Taycan. He loved the car. It's a lovely. If I win the lottery, I think I'm going to get a Taycan. So that was it. That was my time in York. York, beautiful place. I had some really nice food. I can't even remember what it was now, but it was delicious and really nice beer at this very cool place. I, I didn't feel anywhere near trendy enough to eat there. Um, and York itself is, is stunning. Yeah, so um, go there if you get a chance. It's beautiful. My video doesn't really do it justice. I filmed about 200 gigabytes of footage about the trip there and back, and I never bothered editing it. So sorry about that. It was probably really good. Anyway, you've got a little bit of footage here, so enjoy. On the 12th of May, I went to um, South Mims Services, and this was a GridServe charger. Here we go. So this is a case of it not working. The unit was completely offline. Now, the interesting thing about this charger is South Mims Services is run by Welcome Break. They're, they're the company that run this um, motorway services area. And Welcome Break don't seem to want GridServe to do much. So GridServe have tried to upgrade their chargers, but I don't think it's really gone very well. And Welcome Break want to put their own chargers in there. So they did have a whole bank of new Apple Green, is the network, Apple Green chargers. And I did try plugging in there, but it didn't work. It, uh, I should have been able to use a contactless credit card, debit card, but it didn't work for some reason. And um, I, did, I didn't know what RFID card I could use, so I couldn't use that. But it was they were brand new, these chargers. They'd probably only just been commissioned or in the process of being commissioned and it was just really bad luck. So I had to do a bit of a detour, which was annoying, and I went to Waltham Cross and went to a Shell. There was a single Shell recharge charger at a petrol station, and I got there with 13%, actually, which is, I don't like, tend to like getting too low. Contactless didn't actually work in this case. I had to use the app, and then I, had, you know, it was a bit glitchy trying to stop the charge. Other than that, it worked fine. So the next charger was 16th of June, and this was in a place called Whitstable, which is very close to me, and this was an Osprey charger. Osprey chargers always work, in my experience, um, worked with a debit card. So I guess we have time to go to the pub. So yes, it's not too bad to just charge while you're getting a drink. Um, all good there. 19th of June, um, again, back to the Genie Point at Morrison's in Canterbury. And I was with, I was in a Model 3 at this point, actually. I can't even remember why I went there. The Model 3 was with Onto, and I just used their RFID card. Uh, the next one, so 26th of June, I went to Ionity at Folkestone Services. And this is when I did a video about charging in summer in the Ionic 5 from 10% to 80%, and would it be as fast as Hyundai say it is? which is 18 minutes. Spoiler alert, it is as fast as 18 minutes. There it is, it did it. It's a monster, that car. So check out that video if you haven't already, but um, that I honestly worked absolutely fine using the Charge My Hyundai card. 13th of July, back to Morrison's in Canterbury um, in my leaf. Uh, another G the Genie Point again with the app. It all worked fine. I was there just filming a video actually about um, the council not putting in enough rapid charges. So check that out if you wanna see that. 20th of August. We were in the Tesla Model 3, we were going down to Italy, and my wife, Flaviana, she insisted we stop at a supercharger just to top up. So this is the Euro Tunnel at Folkestone. There's a su the Tesla supercharger there. We were in our Model 3, the Model 3 that we were hiring, and we had so much charge, we, did, we didn't need to. And uh, anyway, we had a small argument about it. It's pointless. Good Lord, yeah. what's wrong with having 100%? It's and having the trip more comfortable with less stops. Because Why it charges it's a so... dead time? because it uses up this space blah, 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 blah. But she insisted that we, we charge. Okay, yeah, so it says about idle fees if you stay here, and fair enough, so it should. But I, I wouldn't get the idle fees, actually onto probably would, but anyway, I'm gonna move the car. 
so. I wouldn't have parked here anyway, because we had enough charge. But, uh, you know, my wife insisted and it's easier to plug in instead of having an argument with her. The next charge was 17th of November. This was Ballantyne's Health Club in Folkestone. This is an Instavolt charger. I was there filming the video for Onto. Check that out if you haven't seen it. I was in the Fiat 500e. Instavolt chargers, they always did work. God, I parked so badly. How is it that difficult to park? 19th of November, I was in Chelmsford. I'd, I'd actually gone to Gridserve. Now, I, I, let me just stop and talk about this. I went to meet, see some friends in Gridserve Braintree. And if, I don't think I featured it on this channel actually, but Gridserve Braintree, is one of the finest examples of a charging hub in the country and in fact they call it an electric forecourt because it's like a proper petrol forecourt like the shell one i said earlier but this one's even bigger i was there when i filmed the mazda mx30 review not the quickest in the world at all so i did film it actually um anyway it's absolutely amazing but i didn't charge there because i wanted to do a video about uh, charging apps while i was driving the mocha e but for whatever reason i had technical issues and um, I didn't do it in the end. So I didn't charge at this amazing place. And then I was like thinking, oh God, where do I charge? So I stopped in Chelmsford at a BP Pulse charger. It's charging at 75 kilowatts. The peak rate on this car is 100 kilowatts, but it might be a little bit too cold for that. And it actually worked fine. Um, I used an onto RFID card. It does work with contactless debit and credit cards, but anyway, BP have a terrible reputation, but um, this works absolutely fine. 30th of November, I was driving to a client and I was in the fi uh, Fiat 500e and I stopped off at my good old location, Ionity at Cobham, and it was going really slowly. So let's stop that. Because it should get more than that. That's mad. That particular Ionity is a nightmare. So two of them at the moment are free of charge and they're the two that I've tried. The others are occupied. So sod that, it's going so slowly. Okay, so coming back from the client meeting that I had, I stopped off at Instavolt. Instavolt card this time. There we go. And this was a far more positive experience than the Ionity one. What are we at? About 61 kilowatts. So I'm going to go and get a McDonald's now. Ah, bugger. It was only the drive through open, and obviously I can't drive through because I'm charging. So, unless I walk over there and pretend to be a car, that might, I'm hungry enough, I might do that. Yes, stop the session. On the same trip, I stopped at Thurrock Services. This is a grid serve electric highway place. Absolutely wonderful, isn't it? We have all these charges. How many have we got? I can't count. I think it's about 12. 350 kilowatts. And it was really quick, plugged it in, used my contactless card, whatever it was, and there was hardly anyone else there. I think there was only one other car there, and that was at 4 p.m. Um, I'm sure it gets much, much busier when it gets to rush hour. Hey, there we go, 84, full speed, nice. Pretty good, quick, perfect. On the 3rd of December, went to Cobham, Ionity again for my sins. All the charges are taken. So even though I checked on the app, they're all taken. Unless two of them have reached 100% and people haven't moved them and this was the video that I filmed. There was a bit of a queue and then it was really slow. That's not great, is it? Watch my video about that if you want. 4th of December, I charged at my old school, QE in Wimborne, on a BP Pulse charger. I have a few memories from QE school in Wimborne. Don't think, don't think any of them were very good. Works absolutely fine, using the on to BP RFID card. So that's the second BP Pulse charger I've used in the last couple of weeks, and it works absolutely fine. So maybe the network isn't quite as awful, as absolutely dreadful as it has been in the past. Maybe they've been making some improvements. Same day, Chandler's Ford, a shell recharge, worked absolutely fine. Again, this was in the same video, the route planning video. The final charger I did last year was again at Cobham Ionity. I had perfect speed with that one, but I had to queue for 30 minutes. And that's the moany video I did. I understand why people um, get frustrated. So there we go, they're all the chargers I used in 2022. As you can see, it's a success story mostly. There weren't many issues there really. The main issues were Ionity Cobham. So you can see that that is a bit of a bottleneck. I mean, it's a really busy location and for whatever reason, power limitations, I don't know what it is, or just the chargers being used too much perhaps and they keep burning out. I'm not sure what the issue is, but that location in particular seems to be a nightmare. Um, however, as I mentioned in my route planning video, Ionity are putting in, I think it's another 12, it might be 16, I can't remember. They're putting in a lot more chargers, and I think Shell are putting in loads of chargers there as well, 
where the hydrogen, the, they used to have a hydrogen filling station, which of course they've removed because no one's got a hydrogen car. We're going to have more EV chargers from Shell, I think, from Shell. Loads more from Ionity, and they will be also contactless as well, which would be nice instead of using an RFID card or an app. So that location is going to be fantastic. So hopefully next year, when I'm doing a similar sort of journey to see my parents, then it won't be an issue. Hopefully, we'll see. So are things really that bad? Because I think it's, it's easy to focus on the negatives. Most people that are driving EVs, when they rapid charge, they have no issue at all. But of course, we only hear about the ones that are a problem. And yes, when it's busy, like it was in that December when I went with Ionity, lots of people probably doing Christmas shopping, whatever it was on weekends and things like that, then yes, you're going to get some queues at, at um, in locations like that. It's just going to happen. But generally, it was fine. So as you can see, I don't rapid charge that much, really. Um, most people are not going to be having any issues because most people do generally just do very short commutes and they just charge at home. Also, people that do rely on the public charging network, and I follow a lot of them on Twitter, most people have no issues at all. I mean, uh, my friend James, he's driving all the time in his MG5 all around fixing people's cars and doing services and stuff like that. He very rarely has an issue. Hello folks, just a very quick video. I often get asked about charging infrastructure in the UK. I get told how bad it is and how it's not up to scratch. Um, and I've traveled uh, 62,000 miles in this in about 15 months. Uh, this is our trusty MG5 um, and I genuinely have no issues. I'm charging here on a new charger. This is an Apple green unit. Uh, 100 180 kilowatts although my car is only capable of drawing about 100 it's actually charging at about 80 which is fine for me uh, about a 20 minute stop here after a 150 mile drive is is good enough and this will take me right into south wales so i'm at sarn uh, which is on the uh, south coast of wales so don't believe everything you hear folks like i say uh, 62,000 miles and absolutely no problem so just needs a little bit of planning uh, and a little bit of experience and you'll get used to it. If you are on Twitter if you do follow all the charging networks then you'll see that they are trying to do their best and get some more charges in so if you follow GridServe about one or two a month they tend to be upgrading to like six 350 kilowatt chargers on the motorway and stuff like that so that's getting a bit better but we don't just want six do we we want 36 InstaVolt are fantastic, as I mentioned. InstaVolt have just added 16 new 120 kilowatt chargers at their Banbury site, which is off the M40. And that means they've got 32 chargers on, just on this site. 32 InstaVolt chargers just in this site in Banbury. I think there's also a Tesla supercharger near there, and I think Osprey have some chargers. So this little place in Banbury, this area, is amazing. Um, and that's kind of what we need all over the country. If you follow the charging networks on Twitter, then you'll see that actually it's not too bad, right? Osprey and MFG are doing amazing work putting in charges all the time. There was a couple of weeks ago, Osprey and MFG were almost taking it in turns every other day to announce a new site. BP, let's give them a mention. They just launched a site in Kettering that's capable of charging 20 cars at 150 kilowatts. Tesla owners probably watch my uh, struggles in that little Fiat 500e with a big smug grin on their face because they don't have that kind of issue because there are quite a few Tesla superchargers around and then, you know, you rock up, plug in and your car starts charging and they, they always seem to work. And if you're new to EV charging, it's just worth uh, reiterating that InstaVolt, Osprey, MFG, Fastnet tend to be the best networks. Ionity are really good when they work, but I, I do find them to be a little bit more glitchy, at least at that Cobham station so there we go that's my experience i don't think it's too bad it'll be interesting if i do this again after all my charges in 2023 and we see if it's got better or worse but i think it's all right i think if you're a little bit scared about getting into evs and things i think you'll find that most of the time it's absolutely fine it's just worth having a little kind of worth having a plan b i suppose so if a charger doesn't work just make sure you know that you've got enough charge to get to another one but generally you'll be absolutely fine i think but i'd be interested to know your thoughts um and um tell me in the comments if you've had any absolute horror stories or if you've like me generally found it to be absolutely fine oh and can i just say sorry about my voice if it feels like it's a bit dodgy it's because i've got this tickly cough that feels like it's going to attack me at any moment because i had covid a few weeks ago 
and it's just the cough. I just can't get rid of it. It's driving my family nuts. It's probably why they're happy that I'm in the car doing this video now. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Please press the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of the videos. And I'll be back as soon as I can. Once I edit all of the videos I've got to edit. My God, there's about 100 of them. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.